she's taken quite a lot of the themes of what I was going to say. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I wonder whether she had written the screenplay to that film Sliding Doors. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but the basis of the plot is that somebody's rushing for the lift in the morning. Uh, either they make it or they don't, because the doors close. And if there are two different stories that then follow, so they don't make it, they go back to their room and they find that their girlfriend has already got a new uh, man in her bed, and everything goes wrong and so on. Uh, so it just, just emphasises how something that happens almost by chance can affect all of us and have quite different results. Holocaust Memorial Day, um, I think, started uh, with the Stockholm Declaration in January 2000. And Doug was talking about having done it here for 19 years, of course that figures. But on that uh, day, 46 governmental representatives uh, had met in Stockholm, obviously, uh, and they were there to discuss um, Holocaust education, uh, Holocaust remembrance, Holocaust research, against a background where people who were denying it uh, were coming forward in ever greater numbers. Uh, and they recorded the declaration and, as an act of commitment, signed it. They were inspired by the Holocaust which, and I quote from the declaration, fundamentally challenged the foundations of civilization. Fundamentally challenged the foundations of civilization. And of course it did, that brutal course of activity uh, by the Nazis, uh, uh, to which some survivors can still talk. Uh, millions of Jews torn from their homes, taken to places of misery. Uh, all of them suffered, and so many of them died. And it's not just history, and that really is the point of the Stockholm Declaration. It isn't just history. It's happened again in Cambodia, in Rwanda, in Bosnia. It's happening in Darfur and Sudan. We don't read about that quite so much these days. Uh, by 2015, I noted that 2 million, 2 million people had been displaced and 400,000 murdered. So today is a day when we can reflect on the inhumanity of men and women, the potential inhumanity of men and women. Maybe it's my age, I regret saying it's mostly men. Um, and in our own way, our own small way, in our own small jurisdiction, we need to reflect on that uh, for a number of reasons. The first is to condemn it without reservation, because in that condemnation our collectivism with the rest of the world says something small, but together, collectively, it says something so important and we can have an impact. And we need to reflect on it because, as human beings, we need to be sure that we will not let in human behaviour triumph. Actually, it never does. Uh, at the end of the day, if you look at what has happened in Germany today, for all the inhumanity of the Nazi regime, uh, you do not see uh, that reflected in modern day Germany. You don't see it reflected in Bosnia or Cambodia, at least not too obviously. You won't see it in Britain, at least not too obviously. And that is exactly what Jenny Lacote was referring to. Because it's important that we all reflect on our treatment of minorities. It's important in government, of course. It's important in our institutions, in my own, in the court. Very important that we do that. And it's essential as individuals that we do. Because, as Jenny was saying, it all starts from individuals. How, how do we think of minorities? How do we treat them? And it's why today is such an important day. And I suppose finally we remember today because it might give us the opportunity to strengthen ourselves. We remember those with the courage to stand up uh, to those who are oppressors. Uh, we hope that if ever challenged, uh, we would have the same courage. Um, the courage of those who volunteered to go first into the gas chamber to save, perhaps, the life of another. Pretty extraordinary courage, but some did. The courage of those like Louisa Gould, uh, who stood up to the oppressors, maybe was overconfident, but still it took courage. 
or just every day standing up to those who say things or do things which they ought not to say or do. And it's so easy, isn't it, to let them say it or do it and pay no attention to everyone and then do that. But um, everyone's got their right to say what they think or do what they think, do, do what they want to do. But actually sometimes you've got to stand up and say, no, that is wrong. And that takes courage too. And tact and discretion. And uh, I don't even that. Uh, so um, it is an important day. I'm uh, delighted that I've had the opportunity to say these few words, but actually I've already just said in another way what Jennifer Kate said to us already. Uh, so perhaps I'd ask the Dean to come forward and like to